computer. Wow, my poor little computer is freaking out today. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hobo and Multiple Girlfriend Show. I don't know about that. I'm, I'm too simple of a person. But I am here to talk about some double or nothing reviews. Um, that's only because I really wanted to watch it. But NXT came to town, just like you'll see, or coming up soon, out to the NXT live show here in Daytona Beach yesterday, which wasn't that good. I think Vince had was beginning to exert more creative control. That was really a third tier show. Unlike AEW, who put on, I mean, with the, ex I, I did not, I'll qualify this by saying, I did not see the buy in part. I think the wrestling here in Daytona Beach started actually at 7 30. So I was at the arena, I think, I want to say about 6 45. I stayed there until 9 30, talked with a woman, very attractive woman. Left, came home, um, started to make video and watch videos. So right now I'm doing work, so if I look a little distracted, um, I do apologize for that. Today's a money day. I'm working 16, combined 16 hours at two jobs. And I'd like to say I was very proud of myself today because the job that does not like me, I'm very quickly beginning to dislike called but unbeknownst to them I have caller ID I saw who it was and I gave him the thumbs down now as you'll notice I do not have any more signatures again I went over that in my whole review yesterday of NXT but I'm not here to talk about NXT Vince is in trouble. The whole WWE is in trouble. And this might be good. It might be bad. Depending on what happens with AEW. Only because, wow. For their first pay-per-view, they delivered. Um, I think just a couple of quick notes about it. I like the fact that it started off with the National Anthem. I think when I went to WrestleMania... I think they said, I think they sung America the Beautiful, but there wasn't a national anthem. I know at, you know what, at Raw and SmackDown, they don't say the national anthem either. Wow. At NXT, they do. Or at least for NXT house shows, they do. And I don't know, that, that, I know people poo poo nationalism, but it just seems right. And it may be the fact that I'm old and remember, like, literally saying the Pledge of Allegiance every day in school. Well, I went to Catholic school, too, so I also said my prayers every day, too. I had the prayers, the training, and the vitamins. Yeah, not with this. Vitamins. There were no quote, unquote, vitamins going in this body. I'm interested. Hey, cheese pot. You want to see what's going on? What's going on? No, you can't go outside. It's freaking hot out there. I'm trying to get work done. And do other stuff. Where are you? No, oh, she's being fussy. She just wants to go outside. She sees all the lizards and birds and squirrels. So let's talk about enough about my cat. You're not here to hear me talk about my cat. Sounds weird. It's just what other people do. I'm here to talk about some All Elite Wrestling. And by the way, I am taking off June 29th. I am going to go see All Elite Wrestling here in Daytona Beach. And I'll see, hopefully, her there too. She'll be good. And maybe even July, depending on my job status. <laughs> maybe July 13th, I'll go up to Jacksonville. We'll see, though. So, again, I did not see the buy-in. Um, I want to say Hangman Page won the all-in Casino Battle Royale 
Uh, the, casino, uh, the Casino Battle Royale was won by Hangman Page. I have no idea even if this match took place between Sammy Gavarian and Kip Saban. I know they've been kind of scrambling a little bit. Hey, and, and that's to be understood. They're, they're going through some growing pains, and the show had just really nothing of note. I think, yeah, there was no real hiccups during the show, which is good. But let's get right to the show. So the first match, we had SoCal Uncensored. And that comprised of, uh, did I write down? No, I just put SoCal Uncensored. Versus Stronghearts. And the Stronghearts are Seema, T-Hawk, and uh, Lindemann. And I'll tell you what. If this is what AEW is going to put on in their tag team division, they are going to be the premier tag team wrestling anywhere. New Japan doesn't do a lot of tag team wrestling. When they do, it tends to be in multi the multi team matches, which is eh. WWE is still trying to figure out a little bit their tag team stuff. So the raw the tag team division is not good. SmackDown was always was always better though. But for this, oh wow! Even though it was a six man, this was amazing. Um. Again, there's great rope running. I truly love it when they have... Oh, the other thing. They had indoor fireworks. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Indoor fireworks, baby! Um, again, I missed kind of a couple things. I mean, they spent a lot of money on their whole ring setup. Next caliber got old. Um, so Excalibur. Oh, he, he mentioned hypotenuse. That was during the match. That was kind of cool. DT Master are always fun to listen to. But with SoCal and Central, I mean, there was great rope running again. Amateur moves. It was, I'll tell you what, I'm not a, I'm normally not a fan of six-man tag matches only because New Japan's had them so often, the WD, when they have it, that, uh, but I'll tell you what, this was amazing to watch, though. It was a very New Japan pro wrestling style mixed with some indie pro wrestling guerrilla Chikara stuff. I'll tell you what, it was hard hitting. They took some rough bumps, though, too. Um, they had some amazing moves, like a hip toss neck breaker, the alligator clutch northern light suplex combo. I mean, slingshot moves left and right, slingshot cutters, slingshot DDT. This was amazing. This is going to make me watch, just based on this match alone, AEW more often because if this is the product that they're going to put out there, granted, it's a pay-per-view, so I need to... Tranquilo. But, I mean, if this is what they're going to do, it's has that... Higher production value than Ring of Honor. Not quite the production value of WWE, but that's saying a lot. I mean, if you can have WWE production level stuff, that's that's pretty impressive. Um, the, the New Japan, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it has a stage set up like, like Triple Mania did last year with like, only a, a couple... Goof ups at most, so it, it like it just didn't feel botchy, and it, it went. I'll tell you what the the show for the most part went amazingly smooth though. But I mean, this match, uh, SoCal and Censor did go over. That's good. I mean, they but they really highlighted the strong hearts. I mean, they had some amazing move sets. The six man tag interactions were great. The dealt the the triple teams. Amazing. Um, as far as that 10 count goes for tag team, eh, we'll see. I mean, I do like the Lucha Libre style tag rules where you don't have to tag your tag your partner in. You just kind of roll out and someone jumps in. That could have been better suited here and still kept that 5 count. I mean, that 5 count takes 20 seconds anyway. So, I mean, they have the 10 count, which... I mean, it makes it different, but 
still think they do the 10 count outside the ring at the referee's discretion, though. So a lot of things are placed into the referee's hands, and we'll just see how, we'll just see how that goes. It's not an automatic one, two. It's like, okay, you guys are going to wrestle out there? I'll give you some leeway. And then I think once the one person gets in, then they start the 10 count. So that makes sense. You can have like a real count out, but there's still action going on outside the ring. So that kind of eliminates that whole weird double count out thing. Which is good because I don't want to see no death that finishes, boy. With all elite rest. No death that finishes unless I decree it to be. Um, oh, there was another match. Too. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's, that's that. Yeah, that's there. But I'll tell you what, this match was amazing. This was a flaming yawn match. And I don't think I've ever seen a show open. Live show, house show, pay-per-view, any event open with a filet mignon match before. Because they truly... Wait, wrong button. They truly earned that. There you go. They active here a little bit. But that was really good. And then the next match was, I mean, a step down, but it wasn't bad or anything. I mean, when you start off with a Flame and Young match, yeah, the bar's set up here. So we had, it was initially supposed to be Nyla Rose. Why do I, she, she was Fabi Apache. I don't know. Versus Kylie Ray, who is way too happy. Nyla Rose looks like a creative character, too. She comes in with, like, the, the skull face mask and everything. Versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. And then Brandy Rose comes out. Brandy Rhodes, baby! And I think she kind of swerved the crowd. She came out really in her ring gear. And she's Chief, Chief Brandy. Which is kind of goofy sounding. But hey, you know what? When you have your own wrestling organization, you can call yourself whatever you want. I mean, just look at Hobo Tom here. I'll have to do that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to get that done for tomorrow. Yeah, I'll do that instead. And I'll hobo Maybe hobo tomorrow, too. No, yeah, I can do that. That's going to be... I'm going to be... I'm freaking busy, man. I don't even know why. I'm glad I didn't go to that one place. But, so, so this match... um. Brandy Rhodes came out, made an announcement. It's going to be not a not a triple threat. It's going to be a fail of four way, and she brought out Awesome Kong. The whole stadium went absolutely bonkers. This is awesome. Um, for the most part, I mean, this was a really good, fun match. <laughs> Nyla Rose slaps Kong again. The two biggest women in the ring, and then of course. Kylie Ray and Britt Baker show up. You want to show them what a slap looks like, Shispa? But, um, so, so then Britt Baker and, and Kylie Ray get involved. Kylie Ray is too smiley. She's too happy looking in the ring. It's almost that, like, I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna eat the gin, but I'll smile anyway. Kind of look, too. What's wrong? No, I'm paying attention to you. I'm giving you your squishy scratches. You just want to go outside and hunt lizards. Too hot for that. I'm not chasing her outside. Um, and so all three attack Kong. I mean, there were some great spots. Kong catches Britt Baker on the outside. And then Kylie Ray, attracted by my cat now, does a cross flying cross body, sends Kong to the ground. Um, Nyla Rose hit that leg drop. And JR was surprised he didn't finish the match. Uh, it was really fun stuff. The thing is, they brought in Awesome Kong, 
but the focus more so was on the original three women. And the other thing is that Ali was commentating. And wow, Ali is hot looking. I never realized Ruby's like that. Won't be the first time, though, that you'll get some derogatory, some comments like that. This guy, I do not have a girlfriend yet. Tell it's just my cat who's just laying down there. I'll tell you what, this was a really super fun match. I mean, this is a surf and turf match. I mean, I don't even think I gave the. I know I didn't give that a surf and turf. I don't even think I gave. I think that was just a cheeseburger match. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And I'm talking about the uh, Becky Lynch, Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey match for WrestleMania. That might have been a surf and turf match. Oh, no, the women's money. Yeah, the women's money in the bank. That was a surf and turf match. That's an, that's an entirely different beast altogether. So, again, that's this, this show started off amazing. I really couldn't believe it. And then the next match was the best friends of Trent Beretta and Chuck T versus Jack Evans and, and Helico. There was a little bit of a dip here. Really hard, though. I mean, when Jack Evans can talk, and Jack Evans goes, runs his mouth in the ring, and, and then Helico's in the back and is like, tranquilo. Like, okay, tone it down a little bit, Jack. So that was funny. I mean, Trent's obviously the bigger, stronger person, um, rest, wrestler, um, wrestler in the ring. A, a Trent Breda and Chuck Taylor were actually a little bit bigger. And Helico's longer, not as muscular. I think Jack Evans is just freaking hamster on coffee. I mean, Jack Evans, though, I'll tell you what, he can, he can take some rough bumps when he wants to. It was pretty cool, though. Um, there was no hug it out moment. They and Helco and Jack Evans stopped the first one. Um, there was a double stomp backdrop. Ooh, that was vicious. I mean, again, with this, it was amazing tag team work. And, I mean, there was like a tandem 450 splash. Everything that you would expect from these four individuals. <laughs> and then hit the Falcon's arrow. No one kicks out of the Falcon's arrow. Wrong. Everyone kicks out of the Falcon Zero. I mean, the best friends begin to hug it out, and, and Jair starts to mumble stuff. Jair is not, not big into to fuzzy, warm feelings between people. He just wants to see four people engage in a slobber knocker, baby. I just want to see punches thrown and some busted open head, baby. That's the way we used to do it. In the old NWA. And this has that kind of, again, that whole mix between New Japan and Ring of Honor. Um, at the end of the match, which was actually a really good match, I mean, they couldn't screw it up. So it's a cheeseburger match. But then they try to have a hug it out moment between all four people. And just before that happened, the lights went out. What's going on? I'm like, huh? I was like, no, they can't have technical difficulties this early. And the Super Smash Brothers showed up. Whoa! This, everyone from Chikara is coming to AEW. Yes, 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 yes. If you've never seen Chikara before, you have to check out Delirious versus El Generico. AJ Styles versus Top Rope. The most illegal move in wrestling. And, of course, the hand grenade colony. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. If you like pro wrestling, you'll, you'll, and if you like probably the, the goofy side of pro wrestling, which is what I do, I mean, if I'm entertained, hey, that's awesome. But if you like the goofy side of pro wrestling, you can't some Chikara stuff. All on YouTube somewhere. And one day I'll figure out how to put links in the description.
Especially when they start doing the King of Trios and like the super multi man, man matches. I mean, those are just fun to watch. But again, Super Smash Brothers show up of that with the um, Heartless people. So they had a whole bunch of. They had a whole bunch of. So many local enhancement talent people were there. And that was a fun match, though. And, and, and what I kind of fairly predicted as the snooze match of the night was Riho, the six women tag match, Riho, Ryo Mizunani, Hikaru Shida versus Aja Kong. Um, let's see here. Can't read that. Let me go back to my original notes. Aja Kong, Yaka, Sakakazian, Emma Sakura. This was fun. Um, they there were like three belts among the six women, though. I have no idea what those were. Um, I think it came in from Joshi, I think, which is like the women, which is like the whole women's wrestling thing. Like New Japan doesn't have female wrestling, but they have Joshi. So I I, I do figure where stardom is. I know it's Joshi. Thank goodness they didn't bring that shark woman that just cuts open women's heads. That's that gets a little too much. But again, this was a it was a, it was a fun match. I mean, I think the whole crowd was kind of spent a little bit, and this was that match they need to kind of recharge themselves because right after this match. They had like a really short break where, where they did some hype hype work. Yeah, this was a fun match though. I mean, I mean, I was not commenting this. Um, again, there was a lot of test of strengths. There was a foot stamp by the really small genie looking one. I'll tell you what, some of those Japanese female wrestlers, they're tiny. I'd be terrified to wrestle them. I'd be afraid I'd do something simple and I'd break them. I know they're tough as anything. Still, they're tiny. I almost want to see those almost. Especially the two of them. Again, when your head really reaches the top turnbuckle. Ooch. And there were some tests of strengths. Um, <laughs> between Aja Kong. And Ryu and and, and and Ryu Rio. I'm not gonna try and pronounce their names. Um, again, collar and elbow tied between the two of them. Again, it felt when those two were in the ring, it felt like from New Japan. If you put Suzuki, Minoru Suzuki, and Ishii or Ishii, the Stone Cold Pitbull, in, and they just like start to like trade punches, which is amazing. And again, the very sets of strength. Who can head? Who can out head but the other? Um, the lighter ones. They use some flippy, flippy stuff. I mean, there was this altering um, feats of strength. It was okay. I mean, the bridging. It was the flippy, flippy stuff and the bridge work, especially from the smaller women. Whoa! I didn't realize I could do that. Then, of course, there's a Mexican surfboard. Woohoo! I like that. And I think after one move. I mean, how how is Rio alive? Ooh! It looked nasty. I think, like, Aja Kong, like, hit her, hit a splash on her. Or did, like, a pow Oh, it was a power bomb to the outside. Ooch. And Rio, I think, is a really small one, too. Ooch. I mean, not, not a lot of padding in those shoulders, folks. Oh, the other, the other the terrible thing. Oh, those outfits they wear. I know it's a whole Japanese culture thing. And I'll, I'll give her some credit, and I forget which one it was. But I saw panties. The pan I'll give her credit. Panties matched the bra, so she at least had the set going. Some of those outfits, woo! They're revealing. And then there were some dueling weapons when the ref's back was turned. Aja Kong brought like a trash can. There's something she just like picked up from the casino floor. The other one, um, I 
think it was Hikaru brought in like a kendo stick. And it did mention that the one um, was the other's mentor. And I forget who that was now. I know this is probably terrible of me doing work while making videos. But hey, this is what you have to do to get paid sometimes, folks. So again, until I start getting monetized by YouTube, it's going to be probably a long while from now. But we'll see. Um, I do need actual work. And we'll see how that goes. Right, this one's my break. 4.30? Or 3.30. Ooh, I don't know. I'll have to see. I might be doing a live stream today. And they'll give me like three videos in one day. That's impressive. I have a pile of videos. Um, so they have the tooling matches. And eventually, Riho, Ryo Mizunaki, and Hikaru Shida went over. It was a fun match. I mean, I really can't complain anything. About that, oh, except for the bell guy. There was the one batch. Oh, and this was the only really botchy or technically botchy match because I think when they did the Titan Tron packages for the women when they made their entrances, they did it in the wrong order and they kind of switched that up. Um, again, so many women's belts. The bell guy goofed up. <laughs> Ref went one, two. Actually, I, I, I rewatched it. There was never a three count. It was a two count. It was 2.9. But the bell guy, ding, ding, ding. And the rest like, what? No, this, this match continues. Two. Of course, the other woman who was getting pinned says, yeah, that was two. And of course, the one person who picked up the victory said, wait, that was three. Because the ring bell I got, ring, ring guy rang the bell way too early. You have to pay attention to the referee. Uh, so then the whole whole crowd's starting shit. You effed up. You effed up. Hey, if you're gonna make a, make a mistake in front of an indie crowd, you're gonna pay for it. And this leads us best matches of the night. But again, though, it's just a ham sandwich match. Because then we start off the family fight between Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes, two grandsons of plumbers, sons of the late great Dustin Rhodes, master of the Dustin Finish Baby. And I'll tell you what. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. I mean, I, 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 I don't even know where to start. I'm just gonna tell you what notes I took on because this had like brother death feud written all over it and wow was it I mean I I'll just say this it was a flaming on match and I'll I'll justify it really quickly. First of all, both brothers were just going at each other, which was great. There was no handshake. There was none of the the normal nonsense between brothers. Oh I don't want to fight you. It was just little. It looked like little brother versus big brother, which is what it really should was. Which is what it should be, and what it exactly was. I mean, eventually, dust, dust and roads, man. You got blood. They with some blood, baby. Oh, that's so good. I mean, they really did do their father proud. Um. I can't the curbs. There was a curb stump. Um, Brandy got kicked from ringside. Figure fours. I mean, old-fashioned wrestling moves. Double axe handle blows. Cody Rhodes took off his, his belt and was going to give his older brother a belt weapon. But uh-uh. Dustin Rhodes, the older of the two, but why? Got Cody on bent over and pulled his pants down and gave him a bath. 
a woman. Like I used to give those two when they misbehaved, baby. And they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. But then, oh, that was good. And that was, that was just super bloody. And Cody Rhodes is wiping his brother's blood on him. It's like, wow. I mean, the fans were going crazy. Fight forever. The whole F is so baby. I mean, that's just poured blood. I think I think he also like legitimately got like a mouse under his eye and busted that open too, because it was like the forehead and then like blood was literally like, pouring down like his face. He did something, and there was some backbreak. Since when did that teeth not always backbreakers? They must be learning from that guy, Roderick Strong, the math of the backbreaker. Um, Cody Rhodes did win after he hit a second crossroads. Um, both of them hit. The, it was a finish stealing match. It was freaking amazing. Cody Rhodes left the ring and he looked back and he had that regretful look. It's like, I did that to my brother. And again, this was a filet mignon match. And so he went back at that regretful look. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers hug. And then he mentioned to Dusty that he needs a tag team partner for their next pay-per-view in July 13th. Because he's, because it was, it's a schedule to be, it was, or on paper, it's Cody Rhodes versus a miss, a partner of theirs choosing, taking on the Young Buck. So with that, Cody needs a partner. And because he looks sad, he asks his brother Dustin Rhodes. So we're going to see the Rhodes boys returning, which is really good. I mean, it was an amazing match. Had that fuzzy feel-good moment. It was, again, flaming young match all the way. And <laughs> I was shocked that they, they could actually duplicate something and just go, because that was that's, that's two flame matches in one night. I didn't even miss the, the, the buy-in, too. Well, it's going to be three. Then we have the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks. And wow. Just started off. Pentagon Jr. can control the crowd. Let's go. Cero. And then Nick Jackson slapped the hand away. Eventually, just great back and forth chain wrestling action. Woo! I mean, so we had the brother versus brother. Now we have the brothers versus the brother. So that's going to be my title. That was freaking amazing, though. I mean, the, the chain wrestling, such good classic tag team work. I mean, double axe handles, cursing in Spanish. It's like, that didn't sound good. I mean, quick tags back and forth. I mean, those four individuals, they're going to be sore and tired today. I know that much. Because some of the hits they took from each other, just truly incredible. I mean, they put on a true spectacle of shows. If they, if WWE is highly mistaken, because the Super Showdown is not going to be bet, it's not going to be better than WrestleMania. This, however, double or nothing, was better than WrestleMania, and they proved it time and time again throughout the matches. And I don't know how the pre-show was because I kind of missed that, but the pre-show is any indication, but how the main card matches were? Woo! Vince has some stiff competition. Again, um, just using spot after spot. I mean, the, the train ride, the 3X Northern Lights suplex. I mean, it was like P, like a PWG match and like grand on the on, on the grandest grandest stage of them all. And they had double sharpshooters. Again, Pharaoh Miedo. Um, 
the, the, the Young Bucks will just steal other people's moves. They did the Motor City Machine finisher, um, the Meltzer driver. I mean, the, the Lucha Destroyers, 2X, you know, pump handle stamps. I could go on and on. Way too much to list, because that would be a 50-minute video for this match alone. Um, the Young Bucks did retain their AAA titles, though. So we'll see what happens. The Lucha Brothers are still going to be around, though. I'll tell you what. Someone had to win, someone had to lose, because wins and losses do count. But I'll tell you what. This was a filet mignon match. And that's not even getting to the main event of the evening. The main of Wow. I mean... It was really good. For some reason, that was a cracker barrel barrel in the ring, and I didn't get that. Um, again, oh, but before this, Bret Hart shows up. He's there to unveil the, the new champion, because I think the winner of this match, I think, faces Hangman Page for the AEW Championship. And I think the Jacksonville pay-per-view. Um, flight or fight? I think it's called. Again, that's one of those things I'm going to go, go, go see. Again, depending on my work status a little bit. I'm actually not going to do one of those papers since I'm talking about work. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not doing bad. Oh, oh, wow. About 45 minutes for snack time. Yeah, we'll do that. Let's see that. But again, this was... No, it's not... Oh, it's been uploaded. Ooh, it still has to be processed. Always a good sign. Haven't been banned yet. Trust me, WWE. I just saw Impact. That was really good. I'll tell you what, this AEW. But let's get to Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. First of all, they show all of the Chris Jericho iterations from when, he, again, when it first started. With a list of Jericho, Lionheart Chris Jericho, Y2J, and now the newest iteration of Chris Jericho. So it really kind of very quickly gave gave a good history of Chris Jericho. I'll throw it, it was a very classic match. I think I think Kenny um, busted his nose in this match. I don't know what from. It also looked like he, like he busted his lip. Eh, that's kind of common. I mean, there was blood, but it wasn't pouring out of the top of his head, so that's always a good sign. And this was a very classic New Japan-style match. Um, there were table spots, which is awesome. Um, again, the use of that table, so a sunset flip onto the, t on, onto the table, which is Chris Jericho using the table as a weapon. I mean, a V trigger on the back of Chris Jericho's head when he was against the turnbuckle. I mean, Omega, an over the top throw, awesome stuff. And very New Japan style. So it's something different. Um, the Code Breaker, um, Omega eventually kicks out. Again, there was like the ugliest TDT ever. And then there was like a whole series of events. There was another Code Breaker. It was Lion Salt. I think it was it went Lion Salt, Code Breaker, Judas Effect. Just a spinning back elbow. That's the weakest of all of them. I mean, with that, with the ugliest DDT ever, Chris Jericho, to my surprise, won. And I'll tell you what, this might have been Kenny Omega's, how do I put this, least enjoyable match to watch? Or it, it wasn't one of his best matches. Oh, it wasn't one of his, Hobo Thompson, this wasn't one of his best matches. He's had some darn good match. I mean, he broke the star system. By Meltzer, he can't break. He cannot break the, the food system by Hobo Tom, though. But again, this was it was amazing. It was a surf and turf match. I mean, that's a lot being said, considering you had three Flamingon matches in one card. You start off with the Flamingon match. I have no idea how 
Omega and Jericho could have topped anything the Rhodes did. I don't know how the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers topped what the Rhodes did. I don't know how anyone topped what SoCal and Censor did. But this was a really stacked card. Unfortunately, my predictions were way off. But they it wasn't an absolute zero. I think I got three out of the nine matches right. I mean, I just put to win every indie battle royal anyway. So with that being said, I'm just a smark. And that, for the most part, was the main show of Double or Nothing. A truly amazing show, and WWE is going to have some real issues once AEW goes on to TNT, because they actually are beginning to advertise AEW on TNT. So now that the advertising's in place, um, the matches are freaking amazing. What did they say? That's a four. I mean, Vince better like resurrect Stone Cold Steve Austin in his prime. He better resurrect HBK in his prime. He better give The Undertaker freaking a couple new hips. I'll tell you what. With what WWE is offering, AEW might be the way to go. I'll tell you what, even after I just watched Impact for the first time since the broken wonderful yes, universe of the 70s or 90s, whatever it was, I'll tell you what. I might not be watching WWE for a while. Well, I will watch it because I know you guys want to see or you guys want to hear what happened. See what happened. Well, I'll still be doing that because, again, I'm kind of loyal in that fashion. But this is awesome. Um, I might be doing a couple programming notes. I'm going to put up my NXT video really 